Real churches understand leadership gifts. In Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 11, there's a very important passage for us to understand. The scripture says, It was Christ who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the full measure of perfection found in Christ. Our Father, we thank you for these gifts that Christ has given his church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And God, we thank you for these gifts, and we pray that you would help us to better understand how to use them effectively as a result of our time together right now. For we pray in the name of the one who is the head of the church, Jesus Christ. Amen. A couple of years ago, I went to Germany, and I was able to meet with a church planning team in the city of Hamburg, Germany. And this church is a church plant called the Hamburg Project. It comes out of the Berlin Project, which is the result of two Germans who went to New York City and trained with Tim Keller on how to plant a church. And then Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York City with Tim Keller um, worked with these guys and helped them to start a new church, and it's called the Berlin Project. And then they planted a church in Hamburg called the Hamburg Project. Well, I was able to meet with the leadership team of the Hamburg Project a couple of years ago. And when I meet with a leadership team, I like to ask this question. Ephesians 4.11 says that Christ gives apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Which are you? And just like that, immediately, the leader of the team, whose name was Daniel, he said, well, God has, by his grace, gifted me as an evangelist, and I also have some apostolic gifting. And immediately, Matthias said, well, I'm the one that God has really gifted to teach the Word of God. That's my passion. God has used me as a teacher in this church to teach the new believers that are coming and help them grow. And immediately, Dominic said, well, God has really gifted me as a shepherd, as a shepherd teacher. And my passion is to shepherd God's people and get them into small groups and get them growing and caring for one another and find people who can lead these groups and teach these groups. And I really believe that God is gifted me as a pastor teacher. It was amazing to me how clearly they understood God's special gifts of leadership, but it shouldn't have surprised me because that Sunday I went to this brand new little baby church and they were already well over 200 people. And um, it was just amazing just to see God's grace upon them and the clarity of their leaders in terms of their gifting. And this church, the way it was started and planted and grew in a movie theater in downtown Hamburg, really fit the gifting of Daniel, the lead pastor. And that's one of the things we're going to look at here is how there are different gifts, and it's very important that a church and their disciple-making pathway 
how they do church matches the gifting of the lead pastor. And then that that lead pastor who understands their gifting builds a complementary team because they understand they don't have all the gifts and yet all the gifts are needed. And so that's what we're going to look at right now. One of the dangers is that a church will start with one kind of a leadership gift that we have behind us that we're going to look more closely at. They start with one kind of an approach and then all of a sudden that person leaves and they get a new leader and that leader has a totally different gift and they can't do the leading of the church the way the first one did it. And this is analogous to the fact that in America, I think it parallels the problem we have there of college students changing their majors. They say that 80% of American college students now will change what they major in. They might start in science, but then they change to education, and then they change to business. They might change two or three times. And as a result, 40% of the, of the students don't graduate on time because they've been changing majors. And that's the danger also in churches, especially new ones, is that they'll change the pathway that they're taking to make disciples that matches the lead pastor, but then something happens or they think something else is better. They change, and then they change, and then they wonder why the church doesn't grow. So in some ways, these gifts that we see behind us when it comes to a leader are like the Romans 12 list of gifts. In some ways, they're like two sides of the coin because every leader in a certain sense is to, is to be willing to teach the Bible. Every leader is to care for God's sheep as a shepherd, as a pastor, small p. Every uh, church leader really is to do the work of an evangelist, Paul said. Every church leader is to shine forth God's truth. Every church leader is a sent one. As the Father sent me, Jesus said, so send I you. So on one side of the coin, a church leader is to be doing all five of these things. But over time, it becomes more and more apparent that one of these, or maybe two, are really where God has gifted us as a leader for his church. And so let's look at the these gifts and how they impact the disciple-making pathway that churches develop. And I want to start with those who are gifted teachers. It's actually very interesting to me that Paul, when he started the church in Ephesus in Acts chapter 19, he used primarily a teaching gift to begin. And I like to call this kind of a church, a Bible-driven church with a Bible-driven pathway to make disciples. And that's what Paul did in Ephesus, surprisingly to me, because it says that in Acts chapter 19, verses, 19 and, verses 9 and 10, Paul had daily discussions in the lecture hall of Tyrannus, and this went on for two years so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. Daily lectures, teaching God's word. And the whole region heard because God's word was being taught by a gifted teacher. And this is what I like to call a Bible-driven pathway of discipleship. And it takes someone who's the lead pastor to have the gift of teaching. My favorite example of this in America is the church that my wife grew up in. She grew up in Calvary Baptist Church in Covington, Kentucky. And her pastor's name was Warren Wearsby. And in America, he is known as being one of the great Bible teachers of the last 50 years. And he has a... a a book on every book of the Bible that I think is the best and most simple Bible teaching for that book of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It's called the B series. And 
this was the man who was her pastor growing up. And they used a Bible-driven pathway. Warren Wiersbe would teach the Bible in Sunday morning Sunday school, in the Sunday morning worship service. He'd train the Sunday school teachers on Sunday afternoon to teach the Bible. He'd teach the Bible on Sunday nights, and he'd teach the Bible on Wednesday nights. And people grew and they became strong Christians, and he built around him a complementary team of other leaders. My wife is a strong Christian, and I really thank God that she was taught in that church to obey everything Jesus has commanded us. But there's a problem that happens sometimes in churches. I've seen churches in America that have this kind of an approach to the church, and then all of a sudden they make a change. They decide, well, we want our Sunday morning to be a place when we have an evangelist preaching the gospel. We want to see people saved on Sunday mornings. And so they change the disciple-making pathway and what happens, especially on Sunday morning. And if it doesn't fit the gifting of the lead pastor, then I've seen churches that were strong, Bible-teaching churches, when they tried to shift to being overly evangelistic without an evangelist leader, the church has shrunk. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com.